Carolyn Doobie here. What's the play for today? Well, today I'm playing around in my art journal and one, you're gonna see a bunch of white space. And if you've seen many of my videos, you know that doesn't happen very often. And the other thing is the inspiration for putting these stencils together came from what I call a peanut butter in my chocolate moment. If you remember that old commercial for Reese Cups way back when where somebody put their chocolate in their peanut butter and they're like, hey, I kinda like it. There were two stencils that were out on my counter that, yeah, I hadn't put them away. And when I saw them together, I'm like, you know what? I bet they would look cool together. And then after using them together, I realized there was even a really nice message for me in them. So make sure you check that all out in the video. There were a couple of challenges that I had to overcome as I was doing this. Now, I wanted to have a really crisp stenciled image. And to do that, there are a couple of things that can make that a lot easier. One is to use a thick or heavy bodied paint. Another one is to use as small of paint, use the smallest amount of paint that you can. And then also to, when you're stenciling, to go in that up and down motion. But one of those three things is incredibly difficult for me to do, especially on a day like today where I'm feeling extremely impatient. And that is stenciling in an up and down motion. My hand really wants to go side to side and just cover a lot more territory even more quickly. But I'm having, I'm using all my concentration skills and trying to make that hand go up and down, up and down. And was I perfect about it? Nope. But because I was using a small amount of paint and that thick heavy body paint, I think I'm gonna be able to get away with this so that when I lift up the stencil, I'm gonna have a nice crisp image. Now you might be wondering, when exactly am I gonna lift up that stencil? When am I gonna feel like all the paint's on there that needs to be? Well, it comes down to me just making sure that there isn't any white showing, that I've got everything covered that I want. And all that concentration paid off and I've got a crisp stenciled image here. Now I'm feeling impatient today and I just used a whole bunch of mental energy concentrating on that last bit of stenciling. So what do you think that means for the rest of this page? Do you think I'm gonna have a lot of patience or a lot less? Yeah, I think you know which way this is gonna go. The paint that I'm putting out here right now, this is not a heavy body paint. So it's not as thick a paint as the black that I was using. And that means that if I wanna make sure that my images are a little bit crisper, I wanna use a small amount of paint. Since my paint's not thick, I kinda need to think about that if I wanna have crisp lines. So that's why I'm just putting a little bit of paint on the cosmetic sponge and I'm kind of dabbing it off right there on the palette. I have a suspicion there's gonna be a whole bunch of white space on this when I'm done. So I wanna protect that white space and not get random bits of paint and smears here and there. I want that white space to still stay really white. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw upon some ancient creative wisdom that it's gonna guide my actions as I'm stenciling here. This is guiding how I'm placing that stencil on there. So brace yourself, here is the wisdom that I'm calling upon. And that is, wet paint takes some time to dry. Now you've learned something completely new just because you're watching this video. Okay, you may have already known that, but let me show you how that makes a difference when you're using a stencil like this and you wanna keep something like white space nice and crisp and white down there. You'll notice how I'm just holding part of the stencil up so it doesn't touch the wet paint that's back there. That's one of the things that I do. Another thing that I do is I hold the stencil above the page and I move it around up there and kind of get an idea of what I want to position where before I actually let it touch the page. So here as I'm trying to decide which butterfly to put, you'll notice that I'm kind of holding it above the page, scanning where I want it to go. Once I've got an idea of it, then I actually put it down so that when it goes down, I'm not doing a ton of that side to side motion. Well, that's not what I expected. I've got two colors on that cosmetic sponge. Now, even though those colors wanna be friendly together, that's not what I really want to happen here. So I'm gonna grab a fresh sponge and try and cover over that green with more of the purple. My impatience is about to show up here again and create a little bit of a challenge. You see, as I'm stenciling this teal here, I think I'm being extra careful, but not really. I actually got a little bit of that teal where I didn't want it because as I was using the cosmetic sponge, I basically went over the edge. Now, if I'd simply grabbed something like a post-it note, I could have masked it off and I wouldn't have that problem, but that was way too much effort for me. 
And you might be thinking, hey, Carolyn, that's just the drawer over there to your right. How hard is that to grab one? Eh, that's a fair point. But in my mind right now, it felt like it was just way too much work. Now I went and grabbed a little bit of the pink there and guess what I did? Yep, I've gotten the green in the pink again. So what I'm gonna do is just go with a really little cosmetic sponge since those two colors really seem to be wanting to play together. As I'm looking at this, I'm fixated on two very specific spots on this page. They are the two places where I over stenciled. Two little specks of paint that actually on camera, they're even hard to see right here, but my mind cannot stop looking at them. And so I'm gonna place a few more butterflies on here with the hope that I can distract myself, that maybe I can make it not be such a big deal. Nope, not working at all. I'm still completely fixated on those two little spots where I over stenciled. So does that mean the page is ruined? Nah, it just means I gotta cover it up. The same way that you put a little concealer on your face with makeup, that's basically what I'm doing here. I've put some white paint right on my fingertip and then I'm smearing it right over the stuff I want to cover up. Now, if you're enjoying this video and you want to see more like this, be sure to hit the subscribe button. That way you'll know as soon as I've got a new video out. Now, at the bottom of this art journal page, I wanted to put a word, a title for it. So I chose the word hope here. And both this uplifting word stencil and the barbed wire stencil by Mary Beth Shaw are all available over at Stencil Girl Products. Instead of using paint with this stencil, I'm gonna be using a pen. I am just going in and scribbling around the spaces in the word hope. Now I chose this word because of the symbolism on this page. The barbed wire to me represents the struggles that are happening within the world right now, the difficulties, the challenges, and the butterflies to me represent the hope that things are gonna get better, that we're all gonna be able to get through this together. Now, once you've got it all scribbled in there, you can lift up the stencil and take a peek. If you feel like you need some more, just put the stencil back down. And then I'm just gonna take the pen and fill it in a little bit more. So here's what the page looks like completely finished. Well, thanks so much for joining me for today's play. If you've had fun, if you'd like more play, then check out all my offerings over on my website at acolorfuljourney.com. And thank you for letting me be a part of your colorful journey. 